So we have, we've chosen what we're gonna paint. We've tinted our canvas. We've established our big shapes. And then we've gone in to create a value study, basically. I don't, I don't like that word because it sounds sort of sophisticated. It's really just, we've, we've put in some of the, the darks, middle values, some of the lights, and hopefully what sort of magically appears is something that you, you can identify and you think, yeah, I like, you, you, should, you should like it at this stage. Not that you think this is ready to hang on a wall, but there's something in it that appeals to you. And it, it does to me, whether it does for you or not, I don't know. So at this point, we are, we're gonna call the, the framework of our house finished and we'll go in with color. Again, I'm using a, a limited palette in part just for simplicity. So what I'm using, I went over the supply list already, but now that you, you see it out, I mean, it's kind of primaries yellow, red, and blue, and then my white, and then uh, my, my burnt sienna, and then yellow ochre is just kind of a go-to color for me. And then for this particular painting, I picked this, this cobalt turquoise as kind of an accent. I don't really have a great methodology for where to start, but as I'm looking at these boots, I mean, they're certainly really orangey, orangey, browny, yellow, and I do a lot of figuring out as I, as I go. And maybe that's just because I'm not very good or don't really know what I'm doing. But I don't really, I may get a color on the, on the palette and think that's what I want. And then when I, I put it up there, it's, it's not what I want. And I don't really worry about that. I just kind of go with it. And I'll fix it if I need to or leave it. One of the ways I like to paint and I think is fun and lends itself to uh, a painting that's more exciting is big brush strokes. And as you're mixing your paint don't fuss with really getting it mixed up perfectly let it let the colors kind of ooze together you see that and then just plop it right on the canvas and if you like it leave it so i mean it's a somewhat of a coincidence i guess that the what we're painting is kind of in these browns and our underpainting was kind of in these browns. I mean, that's not always the case. I guess what I'm trying to say is, even, even when that's not the case, it's not like you, you need to change your, your underpainting color. This is gonna work whether what you're painting is brown or red or pink or whatever. So I'm also, hopefully as you can see, moving around the canvas, not getting stuck in any one point and over developing it before I go somewhere else. I'll try to narrate a little bit on this on the colors. I mean certainly where the light is hitting on these boots it ends up being more warm and yellowy and that's where I'm picking up this yellow ochre. It's nice to give touches even in areas where it may be darker. You want there to be a balance in your colors, meaning you don't want to just stick all one color in one spot. It needs to be spread around the canvas, um, even if it's kind of subtly. Uh, your eye just likes that. It doesn't want to see all one color kind of packed into one spot. As we as we're doing this the lights and darks that we established earlier, they start to kind of fade away a little bit. That was too light. Um, if you want to, you just smear it off. And that's okay. At this stage, you're gonna lose, uh, you're gonna lose some of that. And notice, I'm not, again, I'm not really switching between brushes a lot. You don't want 
it to look like, hey, I used one brush and all the brush, all the brush strokes are the same. Um, you do want variation at the same time. I think you can, you can get that without um, wasting a lot of time going back and forth between brushes. Notice I, I started mixing a little bit of that titanium white just to kind of give some touches of some of these higher values. I think my palette is probably relatively messy. I'm not, I'm not really into a, a real orderly palette and not that there's anything wrong with that, but I think one of the advantages of having it kind of messy and having a big space like this is that you can kind of experiment as you're going along. And then also, one thing that's nice to kind of to think about a little bit is having, um, like I don't, I don't want to clean my brush too much at any one point because I like the colors just sort of bleeding into each other. There's something really natural about that. So I'm not constantly getting the brush totally clean, even if I'm going, if, if I go between colors. I'm not worried about real fine detail at this point. Um, I, well, I'll never be worried about that. At this point, I'm not looking at even the finer detail that I'm eventually going to put in there. I'm just getting my colors in, sort of blocking them in seeing how the shapes are starting to come through or not come through. All right, so at this point, one of the challenges of the underpainting being this sort of in the brown family and what we're painting being in the brown family is, it's a little bit harder to see some of the separation that's going on in here and some of the variation that we want. So I might start to give a thought, give thought to what do I want my background to, to be like that will make the boots kind of pop out a little bit. And at this point, I am moving, I'm thinking, I'm ignoring anything in here other than, than the boots and I'm just kind of playing around. I'm just gonna make this up. So, I don't know, I'm choosing this blue color. Um, that blue, I like the blue on the inside of those boots and I'm going to repeat it down here. Again, I'm not mixing the paint a whole lot. And to me that's interesting. And I'm leaving the underpainting peeking through. And I like how that relates to the color I'm putting on top of it. And as we can see, the, uh, our focus of the painting, the boots, is it's easier to kind of see where we're going now that we've established those other colors a little bit. Okay, so I like that for now. And I think up top, and this is, you know, this is purely just your choice, however you want to play around. If you're doing a still life like this, where you're not really, you're not bringing in elements that are in the background from your photo. I, I want to do like a real orangey, a real red orangey background, I think. I may hate it.
But that's the great thing about this process is it's, you can play as you go. We could totally change this. I think the faster you can work, the better it gets your, it kind of forces you, disciplines you not to focus on getting it right, not getting it right. You, you can let your creative energy come through a little bit more without kind of having that edited too much by what you how you think it should be or what you think someone else thinks it should be. And just for fun, I'm kind of bringing that color down in there. Why not? I think I'm going to end up darkening that. All right, now I've lost... Uh, one of the things I notice is that I've lost a lot of my, um, my darker values. And... I want to bring those back before I get go much further. So it makes up a little bit of my dark. And hopefully you can see how part of what this process, this way of painting accomplishes is um as much as possible, you're letting the you're letting the paint and the brush do the work, and it's I guess maybe it takes a little bit of humility because you're not you're not so much in control. It's like where the paint oozes or drips or the brush lays down some shape. You didn't I mean you didn't have 100% control of that. And what's interesting is. Well, that very fact that you didn't have full control over it, and there's a degree to what where the paint and the brush are kind of doing doing their own thing, and to me, that's a lot more it's a lot more interesting than if I set out to say, all right, I'm gonna try to totally, I'm gonna try to recreate this photograph as best I can or if I was going to try to define the success of my painting by how well uh, I recreate that image. With the advent of the camera that was a revolution in art and painting because there was sort of not this need really to recreate a scene, we could rely on the, on the photograph to do that. Uh, what I'm trying to do is just is let my eye float around the subject and when it's, when it's, you know, when my eye sees something that I either feel like needs to be in the painting or I just want it in there, then I just let the brush pick up a little paint and land on the canvas. Try not to be too deliberate about it. All right, I do. I want to see how this um, how this blue color inside the boot is going to look. That's mm, that to me. That's picking up a little too much attention. So I don't know. Just it is where burnt sienna can be real versatile. You take a color that maybe you just want to tone down a little bit, and with burnt sienna. You can just you can knock it down a little bit, and it's maybe if you if you feel like it's too loud. I think that's part of the fun of these boots is that um, that kind of turquoisey color in there. So I want at, at this point I want to establish that to make sure that the rest of the painting is going to work with it since I feel like that's kind of an important part.
And again, this is where I was talking about the um, the paint just kind of not cleaning your brush too much. I'm, I'm picking up, I'm able to pick up these various colors and just kind of blend them in. And then it sort of unifies your painting a little bit without you even realizing it or trying to. I don't have a method and I don't think you really need a method for, okay, what color do I do first? Um, what order do I do it in? I think if you're if you're just playing around, like if you're if you're moving around the canvas and not getting stuck in any one point, that's that's probably good enough. Your eye will will tell you some of the things that are that are most important um, to what you're painting. It's like as you're going along, like. I, I think, I don't know, strangely, I think this little sort of fold in the boot is particularly, it's interesting and it's part of just what makes this what it is. And so I'm going to pick up some of this white. We don't want to go just straight white because nothing in here is straight white. And there's probably more contra, I don't know, I probably have that too light, but it's interesting. But this is some of that stitching on there. And I again I'm not I'm not thinking oh how do I get the stitching to where it looks like like the stitching. I'm just kinda following following the photo and letting the brush play around and hopefully it ends up where I want it to end up. I think this is the this is the more fun part, maybe the most fun part of this process is this this playing around with color, and it's so loose and um, it's I mean this is like this is this is playtime right here. This is where you've kind of done you've done the hard work of getting your framing built and. Now you're sort of picking out your the colors in your furniture and stuff. Going back to my building a house analogy. Uh, one of the things I'm trying to do, I think fairly successfully, is to not scrub the brush on the canvas. I'm trying to paint where it's like sort of a stroke, and I'll leave it at that. If you If you get real fussy with your brush and are scrubbing into the canvas, it just, how it ends up coming across is that um, you were nervous or afraid you weren't going to do it right, um, you were tentative, and when you're painting like this, you, you certainly don't, you don't want to communicate that in your painting. You want it to look confident and bold and fresh. And so, on some of these details, let's say I'm like on the stitching, I think the success comes in not spending too much time on any on any part of it, but just a little quick hit there, a little quick hit there, and then hopefully when you stand back, you're sort of um, you're kind of surprised at uh, how much of it shows through. Starting to come together, and this is where you know we've kind of gotten a lot of bang for our buck now, and things have moved pretty quickly, and I mean, at this, you know, you can stop it. You can stop your process at, at any point. You know, and this is where sort of the fun, interesting decisions come. I do want, I'd, I'd put in these uh, shadows. I kind of like the idea of telling the story of the light coming across there. So I do want to, I want to establish those. And um, I'm going to use that uh, teal kind of color, but just muddy it down with the, uh, the burnt sienna and the um, the ultra marine to get just a, a more shadowy version of that color, and that's where you know you for your black, just use that ultra and the burnt sienna. Call that black and use that black to darken 
in your colors to get darker values and then just use the, the titanium white to um, to lighten where you want uh, where you want to lighten the, the value of the color. I think I want um, my orange background to me it's a little loud. I want to knock that down a little bit and so I'll take my versatile knocker downer, the burnt sienna and in this case uh, with back to my, my big brush, the um, that workhorse, Cheap Joe's workhorse brush. Um, I'm going to just kind of mop some of that in and leave it real. I'm going to leave it real brushy and everything, but I just um, whatever. I mean. You may look at it and think, oh, I'll, you know, you like it that loud. I don't know, for some reason. It's still really bright, but I just was thinking maybe I don't want it quite that bright. Um, I also just, I don't know, that this color down here, I'm going to pick up some of the more shadowy version of that color that we made. Uh, just because it seems like that's what it's asking for. But what's interesting is to have, you know, even in, say, a field of color, let's say this area, we're going to call that a field of color. What's interesting, I don't regret that I had it knocked down too much because that just gives me an opportunity to put another kind of layer on there that gives depth to that color. Now, I have, in looking at this, I've definitely lost some of my darker values. And, and I said that before and because I lost them before. And that's kind of, as you're going along, you um, ask yourself that question, have I have I lost my lights and darks? Because if you, if your painting's looking a little flat or it just seems like it's not really c coming together, uh, there's a good chance that's what's happened is that in putting on, on your color that you've, um, there's a good chance you've lost some of your lights and darks. I mean, just see, even that, those couple strokes I just put in there did a lot for this, for the entire painting, a little detail-y thing that really seems to, I don't know why, on these boots, seems to sort of make them boots, is this, this really dark line where the shadow picks up on the heel right there. So I want to make sure that's there. And what, you know, in whatever, whatever you're painting, your eye will see things like that, that where you could you could otherwise just say oh you know how is that detail more important than than, than any other but your eye will tell you I guess one of the things that I look at it one of the things I'm not 100% satisfied with is you know think about in your painting you always want uh, you always want contrast you want to build up various contrasts whether it's light dark um, big paint strokes small paint strokes or smaller ones don't get too small um, warm colors cool colors you know, a successful painting is about finding the, the contrast that you want to focus on and sort of working up those contrasts. And in, in a painting, in any one painting, you may have you may have a main contrast that you're working on and there's some other um, sort of secondary contrast. Again, the options being anything from warm and cool colors to lights and darks to, uh, well, this leads me to a point I was making. In a painting, you can have sort of noisy areas and quiet areas. And I mean, I, I paint sort of busy. I mean, they're, well, I don't know, loose and brushy. And so it's kind of noisy all around here. And I do want to make sure I at least have a little bit of quiet spaces in the painting where your eye feels like it can rest a little bit. Now, having said that, I'm, 
are these strokes I'm going to put in going to achieve that? I don't really know. But it just it seemed a little noisy in where I and where I feel like I wanted it to be not so noisy. And so I'm just going to I'm kind of I don't know, knocking down the noise a little bit. All right, at this point I probably have lost a little bit of momentum, so I think what I'm going to do is find a stopping point and I'll step back from the painting and I may I may say, yeah, that's it. I've done all, all I need to do. Or I may say, you know, there's some other touches in there. And I think that's, that's probably the best way to work uh, is to give yourself an opportunity to step back, evaluate, and then decide whether you're really finished or not. But I think at this point, I'm going to call that a stopping place. We'll come back for our, a final stage of just some, some subtle touches in there that hopefully will bring it all together.